this isn't just about giving you information. This is to put something into you. Some spiritual something that will help you to become who you're called to be. Holy Ghost, your God. We've uh, begun and have been in with us the fourth message now on fasting. We've come a long ways. We uh, have a long ways to go. This is something you just don't, you know, you learn about. You go, oh yeah, I heard about that fasting one time. No, it's something you have to study. You have to really commit yourself to, and it becomes a you become a student of it. Um, and you have to disciple yourself in it. You have to be disciplined, please. Does it take discipline to fast? Yes, it's part of what we do. And to be a disciple, the root word of disciple is discipline. So, hey, welcome welcome to the club. Anyway, so we've learned a lot of things. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 16 says, When you fast, implying very strongly that it's not if. If, if he said, if you fast, it would be like, oh, well... If you fast, do this. But he didn't say that. He said, when you fast. That means, when means you are going to. It's just a matter of when you do it, right? So we're all supposed to fast. It's just a matter of when. And then he goes on to say in uh, Mark chapter 2, 18 through 20, he said, in those days, they would fast in those days, talking about the time when Jesus wouldn't be here. Well, we all know uh, Jesus isn't here right now. He's going to be coming back. So we're in that day. We're in that specific time, that dispensation, that Holy Ghost dispensation, when Jesus said we would fast in that day or in that disp dispensation. That means that if we're going to function correctly in the dispensation that he was talking about, fasting would be involved, right? Also in Isaiah 58, 6, it says, this is the fast that I have chosen. So God chose the fast to do things. He chose it as a mechanism. He chose it as a method by which we would be able to accomplish things that we couldn't accomplish without it. A lot of people think, ah, I don't need to fast. Well, okay, but you're not going to accomplish the things you need to accomplish without it. I've said, uh, many of these, I've said, you will not be able to walk with the Holy Ghost, who's God in the earth today, in the way that you should, nor receive the benefits that you're supposed to receive and walk in without learning this discipline of fasting. So, we got Matthew 6, 16, we got Mark 2, 18 through 20, we've got the whole chapter of Isaiah 58. These scriptures alone should cause the serious follower of the Holy Ghost to become a disciple of fasting. I mean a disciple of fasting. One who studies it, one who learns about it. You're a student, you study it, you learn about it, and then you're able to do it effectively and then reap the rewards that Jesus talked about. So let's look at uh, 2 Timothy Chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. So you have to study. There's a certain amount of study that you're going to have to learn. You should, you should read books on fasting. You should study articles on fasting. You should listen to yeah, this, these series I'm doing on fasting. Why? Because you're studying. Once you study, you're learning. You become a student. Remember, students study. See, if you're a student of fasting, you're going to be studying what happens in fasting. Why fasting is something that we should be doing. You're studying that, right? If you study to show thyself. So you, you, you're not just going to show, you're not just going to wake up and go, oh, I should fast today. And nobody does that. It takes, it takes some learning. There's a learning curve. There's, uh, and, and as you do it over time, when you study to show yourself, and you'll begin to show yourself in a way that you could do longer and longer fast. Nobody should start out and just say, oh, I'm going to do a 40-day fast. Well, you know what? You're not. You need to start out with, oh, well, you know, this fast starts out with the first meal that you don't eat. And then it continues until you break your fast, which hopefully will be longer than just snack time. Anyway, so here it says, study to show yourself approved. 
well, this is one way that we can get to prove stuff, that we can show that these things are true in the Bible. We can learn them. We can be a student, and we can be a disciple of this thing called fasting, which is in our day that we're in. And we'll be able to walk with the Holy Ghost better and fulfill his uh, promises and partake of the benefits that he's promised to us. So, I'm preaching this series not just to give you information. Now, you will get some information, and I'll be giving a lot more information as we go on, but this isn't just about giving you information. This is to put something into you, some spiritual something that will help you to become who you're called to be, right? So I'm not just up here trying to give you a bunch of information. There's plenty of books you can read. You can go online and find all about water fasting. You know, uh, it's not just a spiritual thing. There's a lot of natural things that go on. And, you know, hopefully I'll be able to talk about some of those things in the future. But this isn't just for me to give you information. This is something that I'm doing in order to put something into you spiritually. So you say, well, why do, why do you preach on fasting? Well... There's a lot of reasons, and a lot of it are, are the benefits. You know, there's deliverance, there's revelation, there's all these things that come through that door of fasting that you don't get any other way. Sorry. But healing is a big one. In Isaiah chapter 58, he says, Your health shall spring forth speedily. Your health springing forth. Well, we believe in healing. I don't know if you knew that or not. You know, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, a lot of churches believe in healing, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't dare touch on the principle of fasting. Well, I got news for you. It's part of God's method. God chose this method to have your healing spring forth. So if you've been wrestling with something that's been plaguing for you for a long period of time, and um, you've been praying to God to deliver you from it, he may already have given you the method to get rid of that. You just have to do it now. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I pray above all things that you would prosper and be in health. It is God's will for everyone to be healed of every sickness and disease. That's a basic tenet of our faith. We believe that God's a healing God. The problem is we're expecting God to sovereignly do some supernatural hocus pocus on everybody or give them some kind of supernatural gift of healing when he's already provided the way for 99% of everybody's sicknesses and diseases to be healed and be delivered from. But they don't want to go that way. They'd rather have, you know, somebody lay hands on them and just miraculously deliver them from, frankly, a lot of the problems that they caused themselves. Anyway, let's go to uh, Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. Let's look at verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption right so if somebody's sowing to the flesh sowing to the flesh and i got news for you uh eating is sowing to the flesh and if you eat the wrong things you're gonna reap corruption right i mean people know this nowadays but you can't just eat french fries all day long without turning into a french fry a lot of corruption that we see in the United States is obesity. Uh-oh, he didn't say that. Yes, I did. Well, obesity is a corruption. And then what, what happens to people that are obese? Lots of things happen. Well, type 2 diabetes happens. Uh, heart disease happens. High blood pressure happens, right? These kind of things. And then high, you know, heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. Heart disease, meaning a heart attack. Well, what's the cause of the heart disease? Number one cause, high blood pressure. A lot of this stuff is coming, frankly, because we've been sowing to the flesh. Sowing to the flesh, sowing to the flesh. Just follow my train of thought here. I can help you become obese and get high blood pressure and then have heart disease. How can I do that? Am I supernatural? No, all I got to do is put you on the wrong diet and don't exercise, just eat junk all day long and sit on the couch. And guess what? Eventually it will come up and bite you. Okay, well, look at this verse of scripture. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. He sows to the flesh. Of the flesh, he's going to reap corruption. The one corruption I'm just going to specifically be talking about today. 
is sickness and disease. People are reaping sickness and disease because they've sown to the flesh and they're reaping that corruption. Okay, so here we see that, you know, you're going to reap what you sow. We are expecting God, though, to supernaturally. So I, I'm not going to change my lifestyle. I'm not going to do anything about it. I'm not going to fast. I'm not going to exercise. I'm gonna, but I'm going to expect God to heal me of some kind of heart disease or blood, high blood pressure. So many times we're expecting God to supernaturally deliver us and to go beyond natural laws. Hmm. But that's actually against what God's word says. He that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Hey, that's a promise whether you like it or not. If you sow to the flesh, you keep sowing to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. At some point, you've kept, you have kept putting stuff in there to the point where it's corrupted now. Well, God has a solution to that. And the way is to get the corruption out. So many times, if you cooperate with the natural laws that God put into or into place, God put them there, it's God's method, then the answer is already provided for. You don't need to pray for what God has already provided. Well, God already, listen to me, God already provided a way for you to be healed of your obesity, for you to be healed of your high blood pressure, to be healed of any kind of heart condition. He's already provided the way. Well, what is it? What is it? Fasting. Are you telling, so if I would fast and, uh, and, and, and change my habits, then I, I would lose some weight? I guarantee you, uh, there's nobody that's ever fasted that gained weight. You lose weight when you fast. We're talking about fasting here. We're talking about water fasting. God has provided a way for you to be healed of that disease. Most people don't want to hear it this way, but that's why I'm preaching it. The answer has already been provided. This is God's method. He chose this method. So we've sown to the flesh, we've reaped corruption, now we have the corruption, what are we going to do about it? We need to have a reset. And the more you start to look into fasting, you see how it is literally God's reset button. We're talking about a water fast of not just a day, not just one meal. We're talking about 72 hours and beyond. We're talking about resetting your inner mechanisms. That's what it takes to, and I'll get into the specifics of this probably more in the future, but we're generally talking about a fast of over three days, water only. That's when the physical, spiritual, and mental processes take place to where your inner in, internal mechanisms are reset. They get reset and God reboots them and puts you back into the right. And, and what's the reset? You know, you talk about this, you know, maybe with a watch here. I'm looking at a watch, but uh, any kind of computer thing or maybe a, a computer game or lots of times, you know, sound equipment or whatever, whatever has a little computer in it. Many times there'll be a button on the back that that'll be a reset button. And what that do, does, if you read the manual, it will set it back to the factory setting. If you push that down, usually it's not a button, you just push. They'll say you have to push it and hold it there for a while. And then, then the whole thing will shut down and it'll restart back up. The problem is most people have never shut down their system. They just keep sowing to the flesh. They need to shut it down and shut it down long enough for, it, for God to reset it. And what back to reset, the reset is healing. See, the reset is health. The reset is long life. Isaiah 58 says your health will spring forth. When? After the fast. See? So you got to have that reset. It will seem supernatural. It'll seem like something supernatural happened. Well, it is. God set this supernatural, natural thing into your body, into the mechanism of the earth at all. If we just obey it and do it, we'll have supernatural seeming results. Because it's God's method. God chose it. He resets and rewrites your own internal mechanism. So, however out of whack your internal mechanism is, dictates how long that fast will be. So, somebody that's been, you know, eating healthy and exercising and not, not doing too much uh, anything bad to their body, sowing corruption to it, is probably, you know, they're probably going to be fine with, a, you know, maybe a 
three to 10 day fast. They have all that stuff reset. Be good for them. Certainly wouldn't hurt them. But people that have, you know, that they got uh, serious problems, they're overweight, their heart is sick. All, all, I mean, they even go on. There's a whole uh, list of things that could that go wrong with people, sicknesses and diseases. You may have to fast long enough to ha let your body do its job to get rid of all of that stuff. And some things don't leave right away. They take a longer period of time. Most people, though, could use a 10-day reset or a 10-day fast. I'm talking about people that are studying and they're disciples of fasting. Why? Because it's part of how we walk with the Holy Ghost who's God in the earth today. It's part of how we do things with him. So when I say 10-day fast, meaning water only for 10 days, no food for 10 days, that, you know, people go, oh, what is that? Well, you're not just going to start out and do that. You need to uh, do, do one day first. And then go into a two-day fast. Then maybe a three-day fast. But then you'll see that there's a lot, a lot of things that are accomplished here. If we preach healing, I hope you're hearing this. If we preach healing, and we do, if we pre and this is God's method, one of God's method, not just the laying out of hands, I believe in that, not just, you know, uh, praying for people, pray for one another that they may be healed. I know these verses. What about this verse? This is the verse of scripture where, it, and, and it works for everyone. You know, you're all about whosoever will. Whosoever will meaneth me, whosoever will, right? Well, whosoever will apply these principles of fasting and actually do it, they'll study it and they'll do it. They'll show themselves approved. Then they'll reap the benefit of being healed. They'll have their body reset, rebooted, and they'll be able to walk in the promises that God has promised for them, one of which is healing and renewed youth. Now, this, this is what, this, what I'm talking about. We believe in healing. We preach healing. This is one way in which God has provided for you to be healed. This puts you crosswise with most of the medical community. Why is that? Because most of the medical community, it's a business. Their business is based on sickness and disease. I hope you're hearing this. It's not based on getting people healed. If everybody got healed, what would the doctor do? What would the, med what would the insurance companies do? Their, their income... Their livelihood is based on sickness and disease. And so that it's not in their interest that people be, whether you like it or not, it's not in their interest that you get healed. You get healed, you stop going to the doctor. And you might go once a year for a checkup. Well, that's not where they're making their money. They're making their money off prescription drugs. They're making your money off of trying to get people who are sick to maintain a normal sort of life. And they do that by prescribing drugs and, and countering the side effects that come from those drugs with other drugs. Well, we'll prescribe this. Well, remember the doctor's prescription. They're not going to prescribe to you a 15-day fast to make sure that you get healed of that thing. I tell you, there's, there are doctors who've gone down this road but they were basically persecuted by the medical community. People that, that wrote medical papers on the medical effects and benefits of water fasting, and they, they do it to this day, that those doctors are sort of shunned and looked at like they're wax. But this is a mechanism that works. Because, you know, the medical community, I hope you're here, this is so much fun, the medical community wants you to think that there is no cure to high blood pressure. There is no cure to heart disease. The only, what they do is they want to maintain that and make money off of it. It's one sixth of the economy is based on sickness and disease. The healthcare industry, I don't know why they call it healthcare. It should be uh, trying to maintain sick people in a way of life uh, where they can keep their sickness and continue on. Healing comes from God, and one of the methods God has for healing you is fasting. Medical community, the first, guess what they first take? They take what they call as the Hippocratic, Hippocratic Oath. I say Hippocratic Oath, but the Hippocratic Oath. 
It means first do no harm. Well, I got news for you. If what they do, you come in and you tell them something and they know. I'm telling you, they know they've read these papers. This isn't something that's happened in a closet. They know that if somebody will fast and be put on a, uh, a, uh, a medically supervised fast, that they can be healed of high blood, blood pressure. They know that, but they don't prescribe that to you. They don't say, well, what we want to do is put you on a 15 day medically supervised fast, water fast, water only, because at the end of that, you will no longer have high blood pressure and you won't have any need for high blood pressure medication. They're not gonna say that, they're gonna to prescribe to you some kind of pill that falsely lowers your blood pressure. It didn't heal the problem, it falsely lowered it. And to me, so all they're doing is they're perpetuating a lie. And not only that, they gave you something, think about this, they gave you something that would be considered a poison to a healthy person. Let's say a healthy person, I go in there and I go, hey, I, uh, um, I wanna take some of those high blood pressure pills you got. And they go, well, do you have high blood pressure? No, I used to, but I fasted, now I don't have it anymore. Could I have, just have the pills? And they said, no, I don't prescribe that to you because that would be like giving you poison. So how is it that we'll, we'll take a, we'll say, oh, I'm not gonna give that pill to somebody that's healed, it's a poison to a healthy person, but somehow to a sick person, that pill isn't a poison. It is a poison, and it comes with the price of side effects. The same, the same side effects that it would have to the healthy person, it has on the sick person. And yet, the doctor who, who took an oath to first do no harm is prescribing to you a poison that is going to have side effects. And they're not telling you that, you know, you go, oh, well, I need a second opinion. Yeah, you need a first opinion. It comes from God. But you need a doctor who will prescribe you in line with what God says. And it's medically proven. One doctor who's been fasting people, that's what he calls it. They come to him, he fasts them. Tens of thousands of people with 100% of every one of them having their blood pressure lowered to where they could get off medication documented it's in the medical journals when it's allowed to be in there they know about it but they don't prescribe it because there's no money in it it's a hypocritical thing that's going on here and well, I guess we, we can't be expected to uh, expect the medical community to embrace something which frankly uh, is counterproductive to their livelihood. I get that. The people getting here is why they, you know, so often they've been against pe preachers who preach a divine healing. Well, somebody gets healed. They don't go to the doctor when you're healed. Guess I ranted on that. See if I can finish this up. So we can't expect the medical community to embrace or promote something they can't charge people for. Healthcare is a business. It's one sixth of the economy in the United States and the number one problem is hypertension and heart disease, both of which are cured by fasting. Are you getting this? It's an industry dependent on sickness. It's not an industry that's dependent on healing. Let's say I come up with a way, just follow me here, I'm almost done. You come up with a way that, uh, some kind of a thing that if people will do it or take your medication, now people like to think about medications because if I can come up with a drug, I can sell it to people for a couple hundred dollars a pop, you know, and that'll cure their high blood pressure. High blood pressure, heart disease is the number one cause of deaths in the United States. If I could come up with a way that gets rid of, right, heart disease because of high blood pressure, then you'd think, oh, I'd be a wealthy man. There already is a way. And it has to do with water fasting. Medicines that the doctors prescribe to you only deal with symptoms. They deal with the symptoms of the problem. They never cure the problem. Well, that's the opposite of what God does. He, you know, he's lots of times God will ignore symptoms of a problem so that he can go and deal with the root of the problem. 
Well, if heart disease is the problem, then the root of the problem is high blood pressure and fasting 100% of the time brings people's blood pressure down permanently so that they don't need medication anymore. And it would only go back up if they went back to the lifestyle that they were doing before. God has the cure to that already. You don't need to pray anymore. God, what am I going to do about my high blood pressure? I need another pill. Oh God, let somebody come up with a special supernatural pill that people can take so they get rid of hype. He's already provided for it. You simply have to pay for it with obedience. God wants people healed. He's prescribed the way. He's chosen the way. He said, this is the, this is the fast that I have chosen to have your health spring forth speedily. Fasting fixes the problem. Many of the medications that doctors prescribe never fix the problem, but actually causes more problems. They call, they cause side effects. They actually do harm to people's physical bodies. They become dependent and addicted to things. I've heard of this before. You have too. People are addicted to the drugs the doctor's been prescribing for them. Did that do harm to them? Yeah. So they, they aren't following their hypocritic oath. Hippocrates himself was a huge practicer of fasting. People would come to him and he would put them on a fast and have great success of people being cured. Cured. Cured of sickness and disease. We're not talking about maintaining a lifestyle via pills. We're talking about being cured of a heart disease. Cured of high blood pressure. Cured of obesity. All right, God has a way, he has a method. He said, this is the method I have chosen. I'm running out of time here. Fast fixes the problem permanently. That sounds like God. He heals you, it's God's method, and it's available to whosoever will. Oh, I just don't have my health care premium paid. This is under God's plan, and he has a way for you to live in health and in peace and prosperity. It's for whosoever will, and it'll heal you from whatsoever. Whosoever, whatsoever. God's method. And we're learning about it. And we're getting better at it. Let me pray for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for blessing these people. Help them to hear this and see this and do this and begin to study and to know your way to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Holy Ghost of God.